1978, A&M, my record company at the time, had just signed the Sex Pistols. In came punk, and out went AFL. I'll get me coat then. My mate Mickey G had told me about this guy, Garrett Watkins, from Abertridwood. Mickey G, Tommy Riley, Lincoln Carr and Garrett had just recorded a radio session for Stuart Coleman's Saturday radio show. So there I am, at home, Saturday tea time, watching a rerun of that week's Ogre Whistle Test with Eric Clapton. Uh, I also had the radio on waiting for Garrett. Well, it hit me like a hammer. Deep in the heart of Texas, crazy arms plus a few others. That was it. I was done. I had to meet this guy. I got his address off Mickey and on the Monday I drove to London. I drove to Ballam and knocked on his door. He later told someone in a TV interview when asked, what did you think when Andy Fairweather knocked your door? There followed a typical Garant quote. Well, you can't tell him to piss off, can you? Here's where it all begins. I booked the mill in Monmouth, a fishing lodge with a large, empty dining room. The mill eventually becomes a recording studio owned by Charles Ward. Dave Charles, my friend, engineer and a drummer from Rockfield, hires an ITAM 805 half inch 8 track. Now, he got it from Dave Brock, brackets Hawkwind. Uh, we set two drum kits up in the room, plus guitars and bass. There was a grand piano, a white grand piano, already there, most probably to entertain the diners. The machine and the band are all in one room, no baffles. The horns, Steve Gregory and Buddy Beetle, were overdubbed afterwards. The band, Henry Spinetti, John David, Mickey G, myself and Dave Charles, engineer and drummer on a few things. Dave did a fantastic, masterful job. He also played drums, like I said, later when I played guitar. Henry was the main drummer. I was the other drummer on most tracks. Now, Henry didn't particularly like the idea, but as I told him, I'm paying, so I'm playing. Now, the energy in that room was unbelievable. It was Geraint's birthday on one of those days. Late into that evening, we sunk a few and smoked a few. Hey, those were the days. As Geraint was playing, he was physically moving the grand piano across the floor. Gotta find my baby, was the track. Rock and roll, eh? I could go on, but one more tale about the making of that album. It's the last day. We need two tracks, at least, maybe three. Dave Brock's picking his machine up about eight o'clock. We go to Monmouth for the last breakfast. Now, up to now, I've invested a lot of money and the outcome is not secure. So I try and be as positive as I can about the day ahead. Here comes another one of Garant's immortal quotes, delivered over his eggs and bacon, which I'm paying for, in his best Richard Burton tones. Ah, Lug. Now, Lug is my nickname, so here we go. Ah, Lug. L O O G, by the way. Ah, Lug. There's an air of doom about the whole thing. There's an air of doom. Ah, that's Geraint. I love him. A true talent and wealth. So, moments to remember for me from that album. The last track we cut for the album was In the Night. A favourite of mine, definitely. I love casting my spell, Gotta Find My Babies, the one where the piano moved. Oh, and I wrote my brand new BMW off. Stuck it in a hedge on a bend in Monmouth. Like I said, rock and roll. Cowboys and Indians, everything I need and I don't want to be in love for the beginning of the next Dominator's album. Unfortunately, it was not to be. So, moving on, my very good friend Glyn Johns heard about Geraint and offered his studio and his time. I think we were there for three weeks. Again, unfortunately, it all came to nothing. Now, I might add, not for the want of Glyn trying. I love what Glyn did for us. And when I hear those tracks now, I think, if only, if only. But you can take a Norse to Malta. You know what I mean? Luke. That'll do. Happy 